Hello, my friends. I am so excited today for a long overdue conversation with a woman that I have actually known and been in contact with for a long time. And this is Wendy Powell. And she is the CEO and founder of Mutu System. So before I get to her bio, um, I want to tell you we're going to be talking about the five major myths of motherhood. And we're going to be busting these myths. And this is going to be, you know, as per usual with them fusion conversations and Wendy's conversations as well, this is potentially going to be a TM TMI zone. We are going to get into it and talk about all sorts of things related to the core and the pelvic floor and motherhood and et cetera. Um, but I do want to share with you before we get to her bio and our talk, just my experience with Wendy. She has been absolutely, her program has been so important to me. Uh, to provide as an option for women, you know, men can do it too, certainly, but to folks out there who are dealing with diastasis recti, the, uh, you know, I'm just going to briefly describe it as the split in the abdominals, but there's more to it than that. Yeah. But anyway, the, the, <laughs> yeah, the diastasis recti, um, or really any type of pelvic floor concern, the core, when, you're, when your core is weak, maybe after you've had kids, even if you had kids 25 years ago, there's a real foundational step-by-step -step system of strengthening the body that I cover, um, you know, in my lift program, but not everybody goes through lift. And some people just come to me randomly and just sort of pick a video. And honestly, not all of my videos are appropriate for everybody. Some of them are more advanced. Some of them are less so. So I love having a foundational program that I can refer people to, that I don't have to recreate. And I've thought about creating my own, but then I'm like, why? Wendy's done it, she does a great job, and I promote this course. So it's called Mutu System. I will put a link to it in the video notes. I really think it's amazing. And um, so let me just briefly let Lenny, Wendy talk a little bit more, but I will say that she is the founder and CEO of Mutu. She is an author, an international speaker, a uh, certified postpartum exercise specialist, and a master trainer. And Wendy, if you can just say hi. Hi, yes. Brianne. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, I was thinking, I think there are probably actually more like 500 myths of motherhood, but you know, we'll, 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 we'll cover five in 15 minutes if we can, but yes. <laughs> no, it's a yes. pleasure to be here. And I couldn't agree more that this is overdue. Literally you and I just said, didn't we like, how have we not had this conversation before? <laughs> I don't know. It's shocking. So it needs to happen. So let's dive in. Um, Absolutely. This is great. I want to talk first myth number one. Go Le ahead. Okay. So bladder leakage and one more caveat, one more back step, even mm -hmm. if you don't have children, even if you haven't gone through the motherhood journey, this is still really applicable for anyone with pelvic health concerns. Um, and honestly, men can benefit from so much of the information on this channel and, you know, in general and this conversation even as well. But we are going to tune in more specifically to women. Again, though, if you haven't had kids, this still applies if you have pelvic health issues. So let's talk about leaking, how it's super, super common. Of course, after you have a baby, you're just going to leak. It just is. It is what it is. Maybe even your doctor told you that. Lots of people have that experience. Yes. They told me that. They said, well, my doctor said it's just normal. It's to be expected. I had, we had a, a customer come to us and she said that the doctor's response was, what do you expect? Exactly. Like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's, the, and, the, and the myth is that it's, it's common and normal, right? Yeah. And it's just, it's, for me, Brianna, it's just, there's a huge difference between common and normal, right? It's Hallelujah. That's what I always say. It might be common, but it doesn't mean it's normal. Exactly. So it and I think, I think that that messaging around um, normalizing leaking, which we're seeing a lot of in the media at the moment, aren't we? That, you know, advertising pads and that kind of thing. And I think that there's, there's an element of positivity to an increased conversation around something that is common to many women. Um, because that makes us feel validated and it makes us feel like we're not alone. But unfortunately, I feel that a lot of the conversation, the positivity stops there because what, what that conversation is very often doing is completely normalizing that very common issue. Just because lots of women are doing it, peeing themselves or worse, it does not mean it's okay, it's normal or that you should put up with it. So yeah, I think that's a huge myth that and it, it's, it's perpetuated not just through the media, but, you know, I mean, we laugh about it because it makes us feel better if we laugh, obviously. Um, but, you know, you'll get moms kind of joking about going on a trampoline or sneezing too hard or laughing too hard. And again, there's that, there is that camaraderie, that, that feeling of validation by talking. 
great, but the conversation is not going far enough at all, in my view, in that it, it's, there is a solution. You do not have to put up with this. So I think I yeah, that's a huge myth. Yeah, I love that you just said the conversation's not going far enough because we do want to take away the shame and the embarrassment, but we don't want to say, okay, but then now you just succumb to it. Exactly. Um, because for many, I actually, my physical therapy career started out in geriatric physical therapy. So I worked with elderly people and I will tell you now, this is a bit of a stretch because we're speaking more about, you know, younger moms. So it's a bit different, but I will say that with the elderly women that I worked with, once they started wearing incontinence protection, um, usually very maximum protection incontinence things, because maybe they'd had a hip replacement or, or for some reason, mobility was all of a sudden a lot harder for them. Right. And so they started wearing the incontinence protection. Most of them that started wearing it never went back to not wearing the incontinence protection. And so I think almost it's a mindset of once you start wearing that, you have to be really careful not to slide into the trap of like, well, this is just my new normal. And the thing is, it's, it's, and it's also, it's one thing to talk about old women, older women, geriatrics, as it were. Um, and, but, and, and even in, in that case, as you're saying, you know, there is, there is something you can do. There, is, there, is, there are improvements you can make. But I think the real sort of tragedy of, the, of, of some of the current conversation is that we're seeing really young women in these, in these media messages and this, this sort of, um, oops, you know, did it again kind of thing. And it's just like, oh, well, just put a pad in love and go back to your exercise class. And it's like, no, 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 you know, there's women in these ads that are like in their twenties. I mean, yeah. it's insane. Yeah. So yeah, I think that normalizing, oh, well, put up with it, wear a pad, now you're done is, is, is not, um, the most helpful solution or the complete solution, um, in any case, but certainly when we're talking about, um, you know, sort of younger and middle-aged women, we certainly shouldn't be going there. Yeah, agreed. And so in a similar vein, another myth of motherhood is, so if you, you know, once you have a baby, sex is just not going to feel that good anymore. It might even hurt. It might hurt. It might be painful. It just might not feel good at all. Like, let's just get it over with though and whatever. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that myth? I think God no is the is is the sort of the answer to just put up with it because I you know that kind of grit your teeth and bear it is just just such an utterly unhelpful message, isn't it? It really, really is a really, really negative message. How about this one? I've I've heard this one again. I don't mean to uh, you know berate my my colleagues in the medical profession, but I've heard many people say to me that their doctor has told them just have a glass of wine and you know relax. And then you can have sex. It'll be okay. Just, just have a glass of wine. Wow. Yeah. Cause that's really tackling the issue, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know it is, it, it's infuriating. And I think there's, there's so many layers to that conversation too, aren't there, Brianne? Because there's, there's the whole sort of post post birth emotional process, possibly traumatic, um, that whole emotional, mental um, sort of health piece, which is how you are feeling about your body and about that part of your body and about what could have happened during the birth and, and what could have been done to you and all of those issues. There's so many layers, I think, to, to sort of your emotional readiness, let alone your physical readiness as well. Um, but absolutely, I mean, to say, yes, it's a myth. It's, um, you know, to, to say that, we, that one, painful sex is okay and, and two, that painful sex should be tolerated is absolutely not what the message that we want to we want to get out there and and if, if that is your situation and if sex is painful first off communication absolutely don't put up with it um you know don't talk to your partner so that that's a first stage absolutely but seek help seek help go see a pelvic health physiotherapist physical therapist like yourself a women's specialist um because again these are issues there it could be down to a number of things as, as we know you know i mean i'm certainly not going to diagnose why sex might be hurting there are many reasons why why sex might be hurting um but yeah you we need to we need to be um make sure that we're signposting women to a a pelvic health specialist in those situations and, and giving her the opportunity and the education and the, and the care to, to kind of get her back, uh, get her to a place where she is comfortable. Absolutely. And you know, it may be trying different things as well as, you know, there's also an emotional piece, even a counseling piece, as well as the physical. So I think there are, there are many layers to that one, but the biggest one has to be go seek professional help and absolutely don't, don't just put up with it. 
For sure. And I have a question for you, put you on the spot about uh, move to system. Uh, have you noticed, because I know that was my work, when women are appropriate candidates for physical, th- or for physical therapy or for self-strengthening of the pelvic floor and, you know, really working the muscles the right way, in- engaging them, but also knowing how to release and, and all of that, when they're the right candidates in that regard, there has been a big improvement in sexual satisfaction and comfort. Have you noticed that with Mutu as well? Absolutely, absolutely. There is. We did a survey last year, actually, where we, um, amongst our customers, and we had um, just shy of a thousand, nine hundred and six complete responses back, and um, we asked them a number of questions about symptoms that they or feelings that they may have been having prior to using Mutu system, and, and what level of improvement they had afterwards. And we asked the question about intercourse being painful, sex being painful, and we saw an amazing, amazing response. Way over eighty percent. Sorry, I don't have the exact number to at hand, but I, it was it was phenomenal. It was kind of and and what was really interesting about it Brianne was it was kind of we we were sort of like that that isn't even an area that we'd previously used in our messaging about Mutu system do you know what I mean it's kind of you know it it was kind of a well it's this massive improvement in symptoms that we kind of had not really even addressed before but it was it was it was realizing that that was there and the the point you make about there's there's engaging and there's releasing and very often that is gonna that will that that can very well be a common theme with with painful sex of course um which is that you know that for for years as we know in in sort of exercise instruction kegel instruction there's kind of been literally 50 percent of the process missing right it's kind of you know engage 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 (laughs) i know everything's about the squeeze and it's kind of you know as we know no muscle works if it's only ever switched on it's kind of we have to release we have to turn off we have to relax so um yeah that could very well be a factor in that conversation as well but we we were um, both surprised and delighted to see that very, very um, uh, tangible difference in in um, symptoms around painful sex. From I love that. I think that's a, a matter of so many of these healthy lifestyle things is when you start working on one area, it just automatically spills over into other areas too. So that's wonderful. So another mo- uh, motherhood myth, I really am excited to hear your take on this, is about C-sections. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had many women actually even ask me, gosh, this time around, you know, I don't want to have prolapse. My, maybe I had mild prolapse on my first child. So maybe the second child, I want to have a voluntary C-section. So I don't have to worry about my prolapse getting worse or my whatever condition getting worse. So kind of a twofold question here is what are your thoughts on cesarean section and being a kind of almost like used as a preventative measure against issues? And also just the mindset of, I had a C-section, so my pelvic floor is fine. Oh, fine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we, we all know that there's no easy way to, to have a baby. So mm-hmm. It's like, there def- there's no free lunch option, right? So it's, kind no. of, it, it's, it's so whichever way we do it. So, I mean, well, let, let's just rewind to the pregnancy phase as well, um, in that, initially on that one. So regardless of how we act, how our baby exits our body, that all of those pressures, all of that, all of that loading has already occurred to our to our pelvic floor, of course, throughout the pregnancy. Um, so yes, there are elements of, um, of, of of direct or immediate trauma to the pelvic floor that may be avoided, um, but obviously there's just a whole host of other stuff that we have to deal with. So it's um, you know I think so. So first off, I would say that the the process of being pregnant for nine months has already placed that loading. Um, and so there is absolutely that need for, and, and the alignment shifts and all of the things that go with um, the, the process, uh, the physiological process of, of pregnancy and the shifts that that makes in our body and specifically to, to the function and optimal function of our, of our pelvic floor. So for those reasons, it's still very much going to need our attention. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, that, then there's, there's, there's all the other angles, which of course have, um, uh, with C-section that you've got that, um, that, that likely loss of sensation, that likely loss of numbing and, and scar tissue and all of those other issues around that healing, which can also, um, when we're going through that sort of core and pelvic floor foundational stages like we do with Mutu phase one and just that those, those early stages of, of literally finding our core again, yeah. um, in that when one or the other of those two places, our pelvic floor or our C-section scar is going to be lacking in some sensitivity at, at, for that period. So it's kind of, it's another reason why we often say that it's so beneficial for women to start that, that those sort of um, techniques 
pre-birth because it's almost like that your body you're kind of you know what it's supposed to feel like i suppose is what i'm saying it's kind of yeah so so if you've kind of already experienced um a a really effective engagement of of and a recruitment of pelvic floor and and deep abdominal muscles then when you're coming to do that afterwards and there is a lack of sensation in in one or both of those areas then that's going to be that much sort of easier to ease back into and from a psychological point of view giving that reassurance that okay i can't totally feel all of it but i know i'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going through the right motions kind of thing. Yeah. So I think, you know, the, our pelvic floor always needs attention. <laughs> so. I, I think that's very well said. It's basically, yes, sometimes cesarean sections are absolutely necessary, life-saving, and sometimes they are elective and no judgment on if you do elect to do a C-section or not. But even if you do elect to do one, just to kind of sum it up, regardless, your pelvic floor is going to have been through a lot. So I, I love that. Um, so kind of on that same vein, another kind of myth of motherhood and sort of the topic of surgical correction of uh, diastasis. Mm -hmm. So is that the only way to fix a diastasis? Is that the only way to fix the mummy tummy? The mummy tummy, I know. Um, no, no, is the answer to that. It's not the only way. And, and I think there's an awful lot of, um, that there's a lot of misinformation and confusing information around terms like fixing and healing um, a diastasis. It's kind of, you know, as, as, as we know, a, a diastasis of, of the rectus muscles is, is, a, is a separation of those. Nothing's split, nothing's torn, nothing's yeah. broken, you know, so, so to be clear on that, because I, a lot of the language around diastasis, I think, can be very scary. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about my tummy muscles have split or broken or torn and and you know so I think it's important that to, to sort of understand that that is that is not you know the, the case and that there is a, that this is a natural separation and parting and 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 that a a large amount of natural healing is going to take place as well and so we shouldn't be sort of worrying about it during pregnancy or in the immediate weeks afterwards you know there is this this is our body going through a process um, but sort of as we as we move forward with that and as you say the sort of the the, the, the mummy tummy is as 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 it's often called, which is often referred to as sort of pooch tummy. Many women describe it as I still look five months pregnant, even though my babies are five months old, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. or, or, or. Um, and diastasis recti can be a cause of that pooch. It's not the only one, but it, it, it could be in that. Um, so, and surgical re repair of that is an option. Now, what I always say with regards to repair is, is, is as with everything that, that, that we do, I know to zero judgment. Like if you want to yeah. go get surgery, go knock yourself out. It's yeah. completely cool. You know, zero, <laughs> zero judgment on that. Um, and, and also it doesn't have to be an either or like, you know, we, we get a lot of women um, come to Muti system sort of either um, before or after Mm -hmm. surgery if that is a route chosen or it might be a route necessary you know i mean there are cases when you know that when that is deemed necessary but i would i would emphasize on that point that it is not for um a self-test to deem that necessary okay that that is absolutely something that a a specialist medical professional would 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 talk to you about and would probably would most likely come after a period of restorative exercise yeah. um and, and 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 sort of attempted um uh, restoration and and, and and engaging through that so one I would say it we don't rule it out it's not it's not the bad guy you know if, if some people will go that route and some people will find that route will be told that that route is necessary but what I would absolutely say of course is that is that in many 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 cases um, no surgery is not a requirement to um, to narrow a diastasis absolutely not it's right. about realigning our bodies it's about um, re finding and re-engaging our pelvic floor and entire core musculature and helping to repair that body and put it back in the right place alignment's a very big part of what we do at Mutu as I know it is for you but it's kind of you know our body cannot repair if it's not in the right position Position to repair if it's not in the right position to work mm -hmm. um, so it's that holistic approach again I think um, looking at surgery as a solution another sort of negative to that conversation if it's an isolated conversation is that we're talking about an isolated problem these two muscles are the problem I'll just sew them up and it's fixed right. it's like it's not an isolated problem this is a whole body alignment issue and, and, and should be addressed as such Oh, yes. Very well said. Very true. And also keep in mind that any surgery is a significant, you know, impact on your body and it's going to require its own healing period. And there can be 
complications and things like that. So I think it's definitely not something to go in lightly. And I always encourage people to do the conservative method first. It's less expensive, mm -hmm. it's easier on your body. And no matter what, it's going to help the healing and the outcomes of the surgery even if you do it. That's so true. And that's something that, that actually came up. We, we did some work with a, um, with a, a woman specialist plastic surgeon in Washington. And, and, and we were talking a lot about this. And, and again, sort of getting away from that either or route. It's like absolutely do, do the exercise. But even if you are going to have surgery, and as we, we're both, you know, we're, we're obviously both on the same page, that that's, that's usually not required, not yeah. necessary. Um, but that, again, surgery in and of itself is not going to fix um, non-optal alignment. It's not going to fix pressure that's not being contained. You know, so all of those, those strategies and those techniques should still be employed um, you know, to, to, to make that, as you say, the recovery work and the, and the pre-prep work as well. So it, it's kind of, it's, it's like birth. There's no, there's no, there's no easy way, right? <laughs> there isn't. It's, not, it's, it's like what we you know, signed up for when we decided to have children. And <laughs> So, yeah, and actually I do want to just sort of put in there that sometimes I, I do feel that although, you know, strengthening the underlying tissues and making maybe um, a functional diastasis, you know, where things are really stable, that there still can be that excess skin that it's just, that's just there. And so I, I think sometimes that can be um, a cosmetic situation where you're saying, well, do I, can I, can I be okay with this? And can I just wear this as this is, this is me and I love me. And this is an, this is a badge of what I've gone through. Yeah. Or maybe you do need to have surgery for that. But again, if you are going through the stages and the prep work and working on that pressure management and working on the strength, it's going to make that beautiful body, that beautiful belly so much easier to maintain after surgery. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. And so the last myth of motherhood is basically about healing time. Mm -hmm. um, I want to, I want to sort of bust the myth of six weeks and you're back to normal. <laughs> well, like we're pregnant weeks, for nine months and we're better in six weeks. <laughs> right. It's kind of six weeks is kind of the magic number in the world of many forms of rehabilitation mm -hmm. and healing and, and muscular musculoskeletal recovery. Your thoughts? When it comes to postpartum, it's a little longer than six weeks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we often um, at Mutu System, we you know what we often kind of stay away from the term postpartum almost, and the the re and 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 we just talk about mothers because and and it's for that reason. And I think many of us, when we hear the term postpartum, well, for a start, there isn't a defined period of what that is some people would say it's six weeks some people would say it's the first year you know whatever some people would even say it's forever after exactly. you have a child it's the rest of your life is that no, sorry no, I might have just no, not at all that but that's kind I kind of think if we have if we have birthed babies if we have carried babies then um th then the, then there are alignment shifts and musculo and skeletal shifts that we want to be addressing um and it, you know, that's not to be taken as like, oh, you're screwed forever. <laughs> that's not what I mean. But what I mean is it's kind of those issues are there until we address them. Um, and I think, you know, that the six week mark is, is six weeks is often used, isn't it, as a sort of a, a green light to exercise, for example. And, and I mean, I very much think that, you know, it's sort of that very foundational breathing work, that re-engagement work can be started kind of straight away. And we really encourage like walking, just literally walking outside, um, you know, sort of as soon as, as soon as you feel able to, um, that I, I, I would encourage women not to see that six week as an absolute kind of line in the sand. It's, it's, it's the point at which, yes, you can start to ease yourself back into, to whatever exercise maybe or activity you were doing before, but we, that has to be done in a really progressed way. Um, you know, it's, it's not a, you know, the alarm goes off and bang your back, you know, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that oftentimes, like, you know, some of us need those guidelines, uh, but we don't, we don't always follow them so well. I know I started running and I knew better. I, I was a physical therapist at the time. I was a doc I, my doctorate and I went running three weeks after giving birth to my son because I was a runner and I was so conditioned to being a runner and that's what I did. And I needed to get back out there for my mental health, my sanity, but it was far too early. And you know, again, just as you said, that six week mark is a time to begin gradually, not to go out with a bang. And I think another component is 
you know, in a perfect world, we would have six beautiful months of support from family and community. And we would be really taking it easy and focusing on that foundational work, the breathing, the just caring for our baby and stress management and getting sleep and proper nutrition, proper hydration. But for many of us, we just don't have that luxury. It's a reality for so many women, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And so that makes that six week mark probably even a little bit more tenuous as far as how far we really need to push. I mean, again, start exercising, but very gently, especially if you've had to get back into it faster than maybe you, you should have. Totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. It's, it's the biggest thing, I mean, that, that we encourage to is, is, is just listen to your body. And I think that that's sort of something that we hear a lot, but maybe we need, we need some guidance with actually tuning in to be able to listen because, you know, we're in, in many cases, um, we're not totally in tune. We're not always listening. You know, we're, we're, we're running because we're damn well going to run, you know, and, and, and it's kind of, you know, and there are a lot of women, as we know, sort of going back into exercise with an almost kind of doing battle with their body. It's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do this because this is what I do. And, and, and I think you know, it's really important that, that, that no mum feels or it feels that she's being told you can never do that again. You're not going to lift heavy. You're not going to run. Absolutely. You can, but there are just some foundations that we need to build first and then we progress. And it's kind of, so, you know, I mean, we, we use the line at Mutu a lot. You Mutu so you can, and it's like, you fill in the dots of the can, you know, it's like, whatever that is for you. It might be, it might be just like laughing without peeing, or it might be running an Ironman. It's, but, but we need to respect our body, love our body, nurture our body, nourish our body, like you said, and, and um, sort of just gradually come back into that. Yes. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. And I want to just leave everyone again with the thought that if you are looking for a foundational program that will really help you tune into your body and honestly make my workouts on YouTube work a lot better for you. And that's what I always tell people is it's like, I just don't have... A, I don't know who's watching. You know, you guys are coming to me. Some of you don't want to hear me talk, talk, talking a whole lot. So, you know, it's really important if you want to dive into some of my workouts, have a foundation, get to know about your body. I try as best I can to teach some of this stuff in my, you know, little YouTube videos I have here and there, but this program is truly a wonderful way to get that foundational component. So um, there will be a link in the video notes and I'll probably maybe pin it in the comments, something like that, but it's a great system. And Wendy, thank you for taking the time today. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you if they just want to connect with you or your, your program and just kind of see what yeah. on the interwebs. We are Mutu system everywhere. That's M-U-T-U. I'm often asked what it means. It comes from mummy tummy. <laughs> Mutu system, um, mutusystem.com or any social media, Mutu system, all one word. You'll find us there. Perfect. Well, thank you again so much for being here and thank you for watching. Um, I hope this has been informative. I know I love talking about this stuff. So five major myths of motherhood busted and I'm feeling good about this. So <laughs> thank all you. Right. You're welcome. And as always, I want y'all to remember to eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. We will see you next time. Bye.